All right, Foundry Groups, here we go. Uh, the w- recap for this week really takes us right back to the heart of the story. Um, I love the idea of what Jesus said in Luke. Uh, over here in Luke chapter 13, 34, and 35, when he said, How often, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I have longed to gather you like a mother hen does her chicks under her wings. And then we looked at Psalm 91 where Jesus talks about, or where God, the God of the Old Testament, who is the same, God the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, co-eternal, so always present, but the God of the Old Testament revealing his heart in Psalm 91 that he will protect us under the shelter of his wings. Jesus, in Luke 13, kind of reminding us that Jesus is the full reflection of God the Father, um, is saying the God of the Old Testament isn't mean and I'm nice. They're the same person and their heart is this, to open up a place for you to come and be safe. And I love the safe place. The only safe place is where? In Christ. Come in and get under the banner of Christ. I love that imagery. And that's what we really drove at this week, the loving heart of God that, that calls us to him. And um, and notice, the, the remember, the hen's feathers, they have these wings, but they don't have hands to grab and pull in. They can only open up and welcome. And that's what Jesus does. He doesn't force relationship at us. He invites us to be in and up next to and close and kept safe by him. I love that image, and I hope you lean into that as we dive in to group's questions. We're going to turn it over to kids' questions first. Here we go. All right, kids, here we go. Question number one. The verses you read from Psalm 91 are from the Old Testament. And are God the Father's words to his people? The verses you read from Luke are from Jesus. Did you hear anything in that scripture that was similar, in those two scriptures that were similar? Question two. How do you feel or what do you feel about Jesus and God the Father saying that they want to gather their children like a mother hen protects her chicks, gather them in. What do you feel about that? If you saw a little baby chicken, you know, those little things that look like a yellow cotton ball running around, right? A little baby chick, and it was out in the yard, and it was afraid, and the mother hen was there, and it was afraid, and it ran instead of to its mother, to a dollar bill, say to a hundred dollar bill, and snuggled up to that. Um, Would you think that was kind of silly and crazy of that little chick to find safety there? All right, kids, have a great week. I hope you're, um, we're getting close to spring break. I know it's warming up out there. I hope you're doing good, having fun, getting out, playing, and enjoying life. Enjoy the rest of your group's times with your friends. And, um, yeah, thank you so much for taking part in Foundry Groups here at the church. We love you guys, and we're so excited to have you a part of our group's ministry in these discussions. Peace. Question number one, have you ever believed an incorrect narrative about God? Have you ever believed in an incorrect image of who God is? Question two, do me a favor, open your Bibles to Luke 13. If you read these passages in your devotions this week, can you share maybe a little bit of how they spoke to you? Question number three, do me a favor, have somebody who likes reading out loud read Psalm 91 together as a group. What traits in this scripture remind you of Jesus?
Is it strange to you that Jesus said he longed to gather people the way a mother hen would? Question five, in Luke 13, 22 to 29, Jesus speaks of the narrow door. He says that many will assume that they can enter, but won't be able to. He is speaking to the Jewish people who thought that their heritage guaranteed them a spot in heaven. Jesus says that they will know that they will be told that they do not even know God, know God, but others who receive the free gift of salvation from and in Jesus will be welcomed in from everywhere whether or not they were sons and daughters of Abraham. In Luke 13, 34, Jesus says that although he longed to gather the people to him, they were not willing. So here's the question. Are we at risk today of holding on to a heritage of Christianity, family, cultural traditions, rather than knowing Jesus because we are not willing to personally come to him? Question six, God wants our trust. He wants us to seek shelter and protection from him, not our money, rules, acceptance, or power. Where or when in your life do you struggle to trust in God? I'm all right. Oh, man. So the community question this week is, do we have a missions board? Absolutely we do. We have a group of people that prayerfully discerns how we, the Foundry Church, spend our mission and benevolent funds. And we... um, we make sure that ever so every dollar that comes into the Foundry Church, we take one tenth a tithe and we put it into the missions account. That's our first spend with every dollar that comes in. Uh, for any reason, for any reason, every dollar spent or every dollar given to the Foundry, ten percent goes towards missions and benevolence, giving outwardly and in a missional way. So, do we have a mission board? Yes, we have a mission board. Uh, I think there's five of us on the board, and we work to uh, prayerfully discern how how God wants us to use that money and what opportunities we should be investing in, uh, in alignment with our vision and values and culture here at the Foundry. We get a lot of requests that come in. We don't say yes to all of them, but we do use our finances to send students to DTSs. We use it to support um, different missionaries from the church. We have a mentality since the very beginning of the foundry, and we said it was we want deep, not wide. So we don't want a hundred missionaries getting a little bit of money from us. We want five to six getting a significant amount of support from us so that they don't spend all their time in the U.S. raising money and worrying about that. They are out doing mission. They are out in the mission field. So we believe in deep investment into missionaries and the mission they are on, believing that in some measure they are an extension of this, the Foundry Church, in the context to which they go. So uh, yes, we have a missions board. Yes, they work together to prayerfully discern how we use those funds. And it is exciting to see that group really starting to gel and do this work. Second question is, why don't we say the Apostles' Creed? That is a good question. And um, I know for a lot of churches, traditionally, the Apostles' Creed is said, um, you know, like after profession of faith or at communion and things like that. The Foundry Church absolutely adheres to the standard of the Apostles' Creed. And here's what we do. We actually, when we do profession of faith, we teach that class in alignment with the Apostles' Creed. We, we teach it in alignment with the Apostles' Creed, its structure. We use other materials and scripture to really weave it in, but the, the foundation or the, the structure, uh, the skeleton of our profession of faith class is the Apostles' Creed, and it's very Trinitarian uh, in its context, and it deals with all the major themes and issues of the Apostles' Creed. But we as a church quite often don't say the Apostles' Creed. I don't know if you've noticed, but we sing it. We sing it when we do the song by the Newsboys, We Believe. Um, 
It is how we sing. Uh, it's, it's a song of response, and it's directly quoted out of the Apostles' Creed. So at Profession of Faith this upcoming week, you will notice that there is um, a singing of a song called We Believe. And in singing that song, it is the way we, instead of just reading it off the board, we sing it back to God as an act of worship. So that's how we do the Apostles' Creed here at the Foundry Church. That is a great question, and I'm glad you ask it. Oh, I hit my elbow, but I'm still glad you ask it. Well, yes, I do like Argyle. Thank you for asking. I know, you didn't ask anything. But Kyle and I were talking about it, and um, I've decided since Kyle didn't know what um, Argyle was, uh, you know the Scottish pattern, Argyle, uh, most famous for Argyle socks. Roll down the camera, clap. Argyles, so dope. Wait, Argyles are your shoes? No, my socks. Argyle, the pattern. Never heard of him. Huh? That's Argyle. That's the name of the pattern? Uh-huh. Oh. Oh. You didn't know that, Kyle? I have really bland socks. I'm, I'm just gonna call like... you Argyle. <laughs> but uh, Scott, Kyle didn't know what uh, Argyle was, so we've nicknamed Kyle Argyle. Why? Because he's Argyle and we love him. I fully expect for this to be on the video. It's time to say goodbye. So I will talk to you later, and I'm super glad you came. The sun it was terrible. <laughs> it was awful. Oh, man. All right, Foundry Groups, I hope you had a great time in your group setting and that you're connecting and growing with one another in, uh, in Christian community and love. It's awesome to have you be a part of this. And um, my hope and prayer is that you're growing in grace, in knowledge, and your love of God. So I hope you had a wonderful time at Groups. Grace and peace to you as you go into this next week. Have a great day.